Second Peter chapter 1 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. It says this, For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That is 2 Peter chapter 1. Now in Galatians chapter 5, it says this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. It says adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of that which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But he says this, but the fruit of the Spirit. He says, some things I want to talk to you for a second here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. It says meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh, which... Uh, with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I've given you two scriptures here, several scriptures, as a matter of fact, out of two different chapters. But in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, I'm going to read that one more time so that we can be very clear on this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You know, this past weekend, we had a great weekend. We uh, had several different families down uh, to preach at the Lexington Barbecue Festival here in Lexington, North Carolina. We were able to sit down and fellowship and to go out and to minister in the streets here in North Carolina. And um, we were able to go out and to preach the gospel. Um, and I, I, you know, I was able to meet one new young family. And uh, it really got me excited because uh, I don't. You know, it's like I, I've, I've, I don't get to meet too many young families. This family was very young as a family who joined us from Pennsylvania, and uh, we had a great time. And um, it really made me think about this topic, about um, husbands, wives. Um, made me think about the fruits of the Spirit. You know, as, as this young couple was down, I, I had a chance to minister to them a little bit and uh, kind of share my thoughts on 
what it takes to uh, endure in the ministry, what it takes to basically hang in there and not get discouraged. You know, I, I, I take that time very seriously. And, um, you know, when I was talking to him, I probably uh, bored him to death by, you know, sharing all the scriptures and thoughts that come to my mind. But, you know, as I see, and I've been a Christian for quite some time now, and I've been in the street ministry, I just try to help people not to make the same mistakes that I did. And I think that was one of the biggest things that I wanted to share with this young couple this weekend. And not only them, other couples that joined us as well. So we went out and we preached and we we all had our time to preach. And, you know, as I listened to everybody's preaching, the preaching went very well. And after that, we had a time of fellowship, you know, before we did and afterwards we did, too. And uh, we were able to uh, put up a basketball goal. Our other one got blew down, blew down, blown down uh, by the storm that hit North Carolina uh, a little while back. It just snapped it in half, you know. So we got us a new one, and the brothers sit out and put that goal together. And if you look back in our live stream, you can see where we put that basketball together, and you can see the behind-the-scenes footage, some little talks that were happening during that time. And some brothers were just sharing their thoughts on, um, you know, how they got born again and things like that. So go back and check that video out. But I was I was just thinking about, um, you know, unity, fellowship, um, being able to come together. And it uh, seems like every time we come together, we have a great time. Really don't have any issues. Um you know, but this, this past weekend, we were able to talk about a lot of topics, which I love. I, I, I would rather sit around and talk about topics and things like that, and I would preach, you know, because I feel like that, you know, when you are around each other, you, you really need to know about topics and issues and the thoughts and ideas and, you know, where each other stands and things like that so that, you know, uh, you're able to work together uh, much more uh you're, you're, you're a lot clearer on issues. You're, uh, you kind of know where each other's coming from and things like that. But, uh, you know, I was just sitting here thinking about it this weekend and um, about unity and, and about this young couple coming in and, you know, just hoping that, that uh, they would have a good time here and, and to be able to uh, return and come back if they wanted to and, and to be encouraged, and hopefully we can be of help to them. You know, when I was growing up, as, as trying to come out into the mission field and try to minister and trying to figure out the, I guess, the right ways and the wrong ways to minister, I really didn't have that many people that helped me, and I didn't really know a lot of people. I just knew of street preachers, and sometimes that can be good. Sometimes that can be a curse to you. It can be bad. Simply because of these things right here that I wanted to talk to you about today, the, the, the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. You know, one of the topics we got to talking about this past weekend um, with the brothers was, um, you know, when you go home, you, you really learn from your wife or your husband what they th thought or felt about the, the, the weekend or the, any issues or topics that might have been brought up. You know, like when families are together and they depart, the husband and wives, they get together and share their thoughts with each other on how they think things went and if they thought that there were any issues or uh, all about the good things. And, you know, um, and so I talked about that with the brothers and I said, one of the main things that I want you guys to understand is, you know, when you go back, your your wives are going to be able to sit with you and talk to you about the things that they saw that happened this week. And, you know, so many times uh, in the ministry throughout all the years, you know, if you're not careful and you hang around the wrong people and you are you get caught up in wrong, I guess, wrong groups that rub off on you or um, that you adapt to and you change who you are 
simply because you want to fit in or you want to be a part of something. You've got to be very careful with that because when you do that, sometimes you always have negative uh, testimonies, uh, stories. Um, you know, when you come home and share what you thought was good or bad, most of the time you, you, you see that it, it, it outnumbers uh, the bad. I mean, the, uh, the bad is outnumbered by the goods, you know. I mean, the, well, the goods are outnumbered by the bads because you have a lot of negative, you know, because you're really not in it for the right reason. You're in it because of everybody else's reasons. You want to be a part of a group. You want to fit in. So... You know, I, I was sharing with the, with the brothers this weekend about wives, home life, um, your, your behind-the-scenes footage, if you will. That's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, husbands, how do you treat your wives? Um, I, I just, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot. I, I've shared it with the brothers this weekend, and I want to share it with you guys because... I think it's a I think it's a huge deal, and I think that it's it's one it's one of the main things that really hurts ministries, ministries and ministers. Let's put it that way, because a lot of times the wives have no clue what the husbands are doing as far as ministry is concerned, and oftentimes ministers are men who go out and they preach the gospel, and the women are usually left behind. They they don't get to go out. Uh, and preach. They don't get to go out and to, you know, stand with their husbands because nor most of the time this this country, you, this world, as a matter of fact, is so wicked and so hateful. It's hard to take women out there, women and children anymore, because it's just not good for them. Now, if you can find a family friendly event that you can take your wife to or your your children to, hey, do it because I would. That's how we all started here in my family, and uh, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Things are. Things are a lot different now than they were then, though. But, um, you know, so we, we were always uh, together, and, and my wife always knew what I was doing, who I was preaching with. As a matter of fact, I wasn't preaching with anybody but my, my kids and my wife, you know, during that time. Um, so anyway, um, now it's just more uh, throughout my life, I guess, throughout my ministry. I think that most of the time I've been by myself or with the boys, I'm, I'm really never around um, events where the wife and children can go, but uh, normally now it's just men. And um, guys, what I want you to be careful of, and what I want to speak to you today is the fruits of the spirit, and how do you treat your wife? Those two really go hand in hand because um, without the fruits of the spirit. You're a deadbeat dad. You're a deadbeat husband. You're whatever. <laughs> you're a deadbeat leader in your home. Because without these fruits of the Spirit, now you may be full of Scripture. You may know how to preach. You may know how to run a church as a pastor. And like I said, all these things are things that I talked about with the brothers that I was with this weekend. And I want to share it with you because there's people that I'm, I don't fellowship with that I think need, may need to hear this. It may help you. It may encourage you, edify you. It may, it may help you to want to change things in your life, you know, in your home. But, you know, oftentimes uh, when you meet people, you realize that the husband and wife, they're, they're on two separate pages. They're, they're not even on the same page. And, and you know, I, I go back to the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. I, you know, when I meet a lot of people, I just don't see the, the spirits or the fruits or the, or, or the fruit of the Spirit. I don't see the long-suffering. I don't see the, the peace in their life. I don't see the, the gentleness, the, the goodness, the meekness. I, I don't, the temperance. You know, um, I don't see that in, in a ton of people. And that's why I say you got to be careful who you minister with because if you're not careful, that rubs off on you. You know, when when you're out on the street, this kind of goes together because the Bible says, consider the goodness and the severity of God. And if you're not careful when you go out and you may go to an event where there's Nothing but a lot of evil and hatred and, and really negative and bad stuff going on. And if you're not careful, all you preach is wrath and judgment, damnation, hellfire. I mean, you just, you, you get so angry and you, you get bitter and you get hateful and you get out of balance. 
You know, the Bible says that a false balance is an abomination. And that's what I spoke to the guys about this weekend. And it's just something that God's really, really pressing me on lately. You know, pr probably because I may need that in my own life. I'm, I've am i been looking and searching my own self to make sure I've got everything balanced out. Because he said, consider the goodness and the severity. Well, so when we're preaching the gospel, no matter what the situation is, if it's, if it's a Sodomite festival or an Apple festival, the preaching should be the same level as far as the goodness and severity. I know I keep hearing this, well, when we go to certain events, the preaching should be harder one way than it is the other way. There, there may be a different approach, but the preaching is the same as far as the goodness and severity because it doesn't matter who you are talking to, everyone has to know the good or the bad, and then they have to see the good, the remedy, the hope, uh, the light. Again, he says, a false balance is an abomination. He didn't say a false gospel, or, or any, he said a false balance. So, you know, when you're out there preaching, one person may be preaching out of balance. And God looks at it and says, well, you're preaching the gospel, but you're not keeping the, you're not keeping it balanced there, my friend. You're not teaching the goodness and severity. You're just teaching nothing but severity. There is no remedy. There is no hope. There is no remedy. There, there, you know, so you're, you're telling them everything they're doing wrong, but are you telling them in what ways they can make it right? Are you giving that balance? Are you, are you teaching the goodness and severity, preaching the goodness and severity? And so, you know, a lot of times that's the way our home life is. We only focus on the spiritual. We focus on the, uh, God wants me to do this. God wants me to do that. Well, what about your wife? What about your home? What about your family? Um, it's all got to be done in balance. There's a balance in every single thing you do. Because again, he said a false balance is an abomination. That means God's sick of you. God hates you. What I'm here to say today, guys, is how do you keep that balance? You know, you can think that you're a good preacher. You know, the Bible is very clear um, sometimes that men think more of themselves than what they ought to. One scripture I want to share with you in Proverbs chapter 19, it says, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. you to think about that for a second integrity is honesty the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles that you refuse to change you know I would rather be poor and not have anybody know my name or not have anybody invite me to a preach or a fellowship, or any of those things, and to be honest with myself, with my family and my children, and honest toward God, and know that everything that I did was of a clear and clean conscience, rather than to speak highly, more highly of myself, like the scripture says, you'd speak more highly of yourself than you ought to, Man thinketh that you know he's something when he is nothing. That's what the Bible says. And to me, when I see a lot of preachers today, they speak more highly of themselves than they ought to. I see preachers all over the country who think that they are just the apple of God's eye. They think that they are just, you know, they're they're the ace player. You know, they uh, they think that without them. The group can't survive or the fellowship won't continue or the church can't thrive without them or you get my point. Um, but again, I would rather be one of those people who is lowly 
that poor guy who um, nobody really knows. But then when they meet you, they say, wow, this guy's a great guy. You know, this guy is somebody who seems like he's really in touch with the Lord. He preaches well. You can tell he loves his wife. You can tell he's a, a, just a good brother. You can tell he's got the whole counsel. He preaches the goodness and severity. But when you talk to his wife, you see another part of him. It's like the, the story continues. It's like you talk to the man and you hear so much. And then when you talk to the wife, you hear a continuation. You hear the rest of the story because they're both walking in unity so well that they're one. And that's what the Bible says, that when a man and a wife are joined together, they become one. They don't become separate. The man don't go and do the calling that God's put on his life and the woman gets left out or the woman never gets to experience what the man experiences. You know, I get to, I, I, I think about these, these conferences to where it's always about the guys. It's, you know, every time I have an event or, or I do something here at the house, I always tell the guys, I say, bring your wife, bring your children. Let the women be together and let the children be together because this is a, this is a group effort. This is, we're in this together. You know, I, I understand a lot of times, sometimes the women can't come and, and that they have to stay back with the children and things like that. But whenever it's possible that they can, I think the women need to fellowship just as much as the men. And this is why I'm making this video, because usually when you see a good, godly man, you see a good, godly woman. You know, when you see a, a, a man who's um, doing things right, you see a woman who's doing things right as well. When you see a man and a woman that are doing things right, usually you see children that are doing right. And I'm big on that. I, I think that that's huge because I tell people all the time, if you want to see how I am or who I am, come meet my wife. If you, if you want to see who me and my wife are, come talk to my children. You know, when I had the brothers and sisters over this weekend, I told them, I said, you know, if you want to know more and just, you know, my kids were walking around, I said, pull one of them aside, ask them, talk to them, ask them questions, feel free, ask them questions. You know, I mean, a lot of times people says, well, I wouldn't want that to happen because you're kind of scared of what they're going to say. I'm not, you know, I don't, <laughs> I, you know, of course I have things here that we don't tell people um, that are our little secrets and our little things here at our home, but but as far as living, as far as Christianity, as far as life, as far as my attitude, as far as my behavior, ask anything because that's the real test is when people start quizzing who you really are. You know, it'd be easy for me to sit behind the camera like I'm doing right now and to quote scripture and, and things like that and to fool you, uh, just make you think that I'm somebody great. But then when you come to my house, you see that my house would be all out of order. My house would be falling apart. I'd have clothes laying everywhere, just trash all over the place, vehicles shot. I mean, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm talking about not that people should afford things better. I'm saying that people keep up what they have. Um, how do we present ourselves? How does our wives present themselves? How do our children present themselves? You know, am, am I the same in person as I am on the camera? You know, and, I, and again, I, I talk about these things, the fruit of the Spirit, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness. I don't see that in a lot of people. I see a lot of people who's just ministry, ministry, ministry. But when you talk to their wives, when you talk to their children, you see that there is a out of balance in their home. You know, it's, it's not even close. And I personally don't want to be around those people. I don't. I don't want to be around those people who are well known for going out into the streets and preaching and making YouTube videos or Instagram posts or Facebook posts or 
being a pastor of a church and people look up there and they say, well, my pastor's a man of God. I don't want to be a part of a ministry or ministers or fellowships, groups that are out of balance. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, they say, why don't you preach with a lot of groups you used to? I see a lot of out of balance. And, and uh, I don't call them and, and criticize and ridicule. You know, a lot of times I just let them be them. Uh, if people ask me my thoughts, I'll share with you my thoughts on, on things that are happening. But for the most part, I just try to worry about myself and my family, my wife and my children. You know, number one, I've got a large family. I've got a family of 13. You know, I've got a, me and my wife have 11 children. And um, so my life is very different than most preachers that I even hang around with or that I minister with because I am constantly doing something. So I don't have time to get involved in a lot of social media and things like that. I seen somebody brought a post to my attention here recently about why don't Brian denounce this group or that group. And he says he's not on social media. I, I, don't, I don't even remember who sent me the screenshot about you know, he, he says he's not on social media. Well, I'm not. I, I don't have social media. I'm on YouTube uh, when I can. Um, um, they said that I act like I don't preach with certain people, and I do. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what what you're talking about because I preach with my, my family. I preach with certain brothers that you see on YouTube. That's it. Um, you know, I don't have a secret preaching life. Um, um, but anyway, I just, you know, I wanted to share this with you guys and ask you ministers out there, if you're a male or a female, does your wife or your husband really know about you? Do you really get along? Do you see eye to eye on these, these issues? Do you spend as much time with your husband or your wife as you do those street corners? Do you, um, you know, I was telling the brothers this weekend and, um, I said, if, 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 if I knew there was issues, I'd be coming to them personally. Because if we don't stay transparent with each other and things like that, we'll never really grow. We'll never fully be able to work together like we should because there's always something going on. And, and I don't want to be a part of a ministry who... Um, every week something new is coming up with another brother. Oh, have you heard about this? I, I don't want to do those things. I just, I want to do, um, I want to be able just to, to go and preach with brothers and have a good time. Now, there's always going to be some differences and things. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, we, there's going to be differences in every group and every fellowship. I'm talking about major issues, though. And, and a lot of people don't see it as major because they don't. It's like this scripture. Let me pull it back up here. It's like this uh, the scripture right here. Man. Where's the scripture that I'm looking for? Oh, it says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But here in verse nine, it says this, this is coming out of second Peter chapter one, but he says, but he that lacketh these things is blind. So a lot of times people may not see that they are not fully transparent or loving, gentle, meekness, kind, patient with their wife because they're blind. And it says, and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You know, there's a lot of times we look and, you know, I seen a, a video clip the other day. It was this morning, as a matter of fact, me and my wife seen it. And the husband was just wasn't very nice uh, <laughs> to his wife in a video and, and I was sitting here thinking wow you know what 
Sometimes preachers are a pain in the butt. They're just rude. They're obnoxious. They're just jerks. They're just self-centered. They're, uh, everything revolves around them. You know, the, the husband gets his head scratched and back rubbed and, and uh, you know, uh, baby and, and pampered all day long and all night long and the wife sits there and slaves over him and deep down she's miserable. Deep down she's, she's, she don't want nothing to do with Christianity to be honest with you. Because of the, the actions that her husband displays in front of her, you know, it's, it's, and then, you know, a man gets on the microphone and he preaches and he, he tells everybody else how to live their life. And the wife is kind of sitting behind the scenes saying, well, if they only knew how you treated me. I, you know, I see that so often. I see that all the time. I, I see it all the time, you know, because street preachers, I say street preachers because that's what I do. You know, I mean, I'm around a lot of different preachers and, and I see it all the time. And that's what makes me think sometimes about Christianity and and I, I see how fruitful the ministry can be and I see how unfruitful it can be because it says some people are blind to these things and it leaves them unfruitful. And it shows that they have forgotten that somebody loved them and cared about them enough to step down and to help them. You know, the Bible is very clear. It says, to whom much is forgiven, much is required, not forgiven. To whom much is given, much is required. You know, um, some of you preachers out there have been given the ministry of preaching the goodness and severity. And you preach all severity. And there's never goodness. And the reason I think that is, is because you have forgotten where you come from. You have forgotten that when you was hell bound and on your way to hell at neck break speed without hope and without remedy, without any preaching, without any family, without any friends to help you and to, to lead you and guide you and to counsel you. God stepped in on your behalf, and, and somewhere along the line, you've become arrogant, you've become self-seeking, self-centered, uh, you've become a one-man band, this is all about you, and the wife is supposed to just shut up and help you and to, to keep silent and things, and some of these things are biblical, but not in the way that most ministers handle it this day and time. You know, a lot of ministers, it's all about you. So this video is just a question. Where do you stand with your wife? Where do you stand with your husband? Where do you stand with your children? Where do you stand with your ministry? Pastors, where do you stand with your congregation, your, your flock? <clears throat> is it all about you? I mean, do you, do you preach as if you're God himself? Do you think that you are the one-man band that everybody needs you? Do you think that you're so great that everybody can't preach without you? And I've never met a man yet that I could not live without. I just, I'm being totally honest. I, I have met every street preacher, well, that I've met so far, I'd say that. Uh, I've met tons of street preachers and I've not seen any that I could not live without. And I've never seen any that couldn't live without me. Um, you know, but I'm constantly thinking about trying to be considerate and to be gentle, peaceful, kind, you know, showing mercy, showing long suffering because that's what God did for me. And, and you know, even though I still mess up, <laughs> I still fall short. I think there's so many times in my life I, I see where I could do better all the time. And I'm so glad that somebody don't just bark at me and just point the finger at me and talk down to me like I'm some dog or something because I don't do it the way they want me to do it. You know, uh, Thankfully, thankfully, that's not the 
that's not what that's not how we're going to what's going to determine whether we make it into heaven or not because you know if it was up to man we'd all be into hell you know we'd all go to hell because man just wants to look down on people you know it's getting it's like getting very rare that you see ministers have that fruit of the spirit i see a lot that want to just preach wrath and judgment and hell i I see that all across the country i see it all over the world (laughs) you know um I don't watch many YouTube videos anymore, so I've, I've, I don't see as much of it as what I used to. But um, nevertheless, I know it still goes on, and, and uh, people send me links to videos, and I look at them, and I just say, man, the fruit of the Spirit is slowly slipping away. There's not a lot of long-suffering anymore with anybody or anything. There's not a lot of joy You know, as I was speaking to the young couple that visited my house this weekend, I tried to keep it very simple and to say, listen, when you go out to minister with groups or families or whatever it may be, if it's not a joy anymore, you better watch out and you better consider what you're doing with your time and the people that you're hanging around, you know, hanging around because it should be a joy. Um, And I told that young couple, I said, When you leave this house this weekend, you will know immediately if you ever want to come back or not. You know, sometimes I leave a a fellowship or a group or a meeting and I say, you know what, man, I don't ever want to go back there. I don't I don't want to be a part of that at all. Because you can see the hypocrisy. You can see the the you can see that there's no joy. You can see that there's no excitement. You can see that there's no. Um, being content, being a Christian, you can see that there's so much anger and bitterness. And you don't see a lot of long-suffering. You don't see a lot of forgiveness. You don't see a lot of willingness to want to work together. You don't see that because you hear their husband speak. You hear their wife speak. My, um, I guess my challenge to you people out there that'll watch this is to, when you close this video off, go to your husband and go to your wife or go to your children or go to your pastor, whoever it may be, and say, are you content with me? Are you truly excited? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Are you excited about what I do for the Lord? Ask your wife that. And for you women, ask your husband that. Ask your husband, are you excited about me as your wife? And and are you excited about me being the keeper of the home? Are you excited about me praying and helping you and standing by you? And ask yourself that. And then ask your husband Do you feel like I could be content with you? You know, I think we need to be straight up people. Because I can assure you, if most of you men watch this video and you ask your wife, are you totally 100% on board with me? Are you 100% content with me? And ask them to be totally 100% honest. I mean, guys, take this serious. Because if you want to see one place that you will fail in your ministry, if you're not careful, it is not having a family that is on board. You know, the Bible is very clear. A man who cannot rule over his own household and who cannot provide for his own, that does not mean just food and money. If you can't provide for your own, he said you are worse than an infidel and you have denied the faith. Man's got to rule over his home, number one. So ask yourself that, guys. Today, if you're a minister, you're a pastor, ask yourself, are you ruling over your home well? That don't mean you're bossy and you call the shots and and you'll do as I say when I say and and you'll submit and, and, you know, that's not what I'm saying. That's just being a bully. That's just being a, um, yeah, a bully. You just, you you know, I can assure you if you're doing that, you're not running your house well. And I can assure you, your wife's not on board. And there are a ton of people like that right now. 
So I'm just simply saying, if you're a minister, no, it not, if you're a born-again, God-fearing, Bible-believing Christian, go ask yourself after you watch this video, go ask your wife, say, are you 100% content with me? Do I treat you the way I'm supposed to? When I preach, do you love hearing my preaching? Do, do, do you think that I'm a, a well-balanced preacher? Do you believe, ask your wife, do you believe that I am a balanced preacher to where I preach the goodness and severity? See what your wife says. Ask your wife, when I preach, do you get edified by it? Do you get encouraged or do you get discouraged? Do you get angry? Do you, do you feel like, do you feel like I spend more time with the heathen than I do you? Ask your wife that. And for you women uh, that may watch this video, um, you're probably not preachers. Some of you may be. Um, go to your husband and ask your husband, are you content with me as your wife, as your helper, as your provider as far as being here and talking to you and praying for you and helping you cook and clean and all these things because that let's face it that's what women do and they do it very well you know that's what my wife does and and i couldn't i you know i i don't see that i could do it without her at all you know um me being a preacher is never greater than her helping my children and cleaning our house and we all clean our house but her being here and doing those things that a lady does best you know i mean um you know, I'm just careful how I word this because there's some women out there that says, oh, you, what are you saying? All women are is for cooking and cleaning and stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just simply saying that most women, that's what they're doing. They're, take, you know, uh, uh, takers, uh, caregivers at the home and uh, people who take care of the home and uh, take care of those children, teach and train those children. And so ask your husband, say, are you pleased with me? Do you, do you look at me? as somebody who's great at what I do. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with that, guys. Um, I hope this helps you. I hope this will challenge you to ask yourself, do I have the fruits of the Spirit? Do I have gentleness in my marriage? Do I have it on the street? Do I have long-suffering kindness? Now, let me, let me tell you something, guys. This is not a message to where... I'm saying you guys that are out there and you preach hard, I preach hard, you know. Uh, I'm not saying we should be watered down sissies and we should love and love and never preach the wrath of God or never point a finger. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, do you have long sufferance and patience and a false balance? I mean, a, 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 a um, consistent balance to where you don't have a false balance and God thinks you're an abomination. I'm just trying to be straight up with you guys out there. I want you to uh, to uh, ask yourself the question, you know, uh, every, is, is everything that I'm doing pleasing to God? But I, like I said, I talked about it with the guys this weekend, and I wanted to share it with you people who wasn't able to be here. And uh, even for the guys that were here, I mean, go, go and do the same things I'm challenging the viewers to do right now. Um, I have to do the same thing. You know, I have to, as a matter of fact, I was sitting talking to my wife about it this morning because uh, I want to make sure that I'm transparent. I want to make sure that what I'm doing here with my wife shows when I have visitors, you know, when I have brothers over, I want them to be able to talk to my wife and to ask her questions and to see what I'm really about, you know, and to see if what I've been saying and preaching and teaching is, is true, is, is real. That's how we'll know. And so, uh, anyway, I hope this video helps some of you people out there. I think that if you're honest and I think that if you will take this video serious and you'll sit down with your husband and wife and show them this video, I think that this video will help you majorly if you have the guts to do it. If you don't have that fruit of the Spirit and it's really all about you, you probably won't show your wife or your husband this video because if you do show them this video, it forces you to either tell a truth, tell a tr tell the truth or tell a lie. You have to, to 
be honest with yourself. You, you're either going to have to tell your husband or your wife the truth, or you're going to have to lie to them. If you're a lady and, and you your husband brings this video to you and, and you're not on board with him and you're not in agreement and you don't tell him that you're in disagreement, then you would be a liar. And if you're a uh, wife that brings this to your husband and your husband's watching this right now and he looks at you and says, oh, I love everything about you, knowing good and well that he don't, then it makes him a liar. So this video is really to help transparency, to, to help both of you to uh, understand, man, are we where we need to be at as a couple? You know, I go back to the young couple that I met this weekend. They're very young. I'm super excited for them. Hope to be able to uh, spend more time with them and encourage them if the Lord allows. And, and uh, to see them grow, to see them to grow and to... Uh, See what all their 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 uh, see what all the Lord has planned for them. You know whether I'm I'm with these people or not. You know uh, I want to be there to encourage them and, and to uh, uh, talk with them if they need uh, anybody to talk with. Um, but you know I see them and I and I think wow you're starting off so young. Don't skip the transparency because I was actually able to sit with them face to face this weekend and I asked the wife, I said, how do you feel about the street preaching? How do you feel about what your husband does? How do you feel about uh, your husband going out and being on the street? How do you feel about, yeah, I asked them a lot of questions, you know, uh, because I wanted to make sure that they are in touch one with another and they're being super transparent so that everything they do runs like a, a very fine tuned machine. That's what it's about. And uh, anyway, so I guess the challenge would be is if you're a man, tell your wife you want to sit down and watch this video together. Ask yourself that question at the end. Are you pleased with me? Switch and see what the answers are. And if you're a woman and you're watching this video, sit down with your husband and at the end, ask the questions, switch places, uh, you know, quiz each other, find out where you stand in your husband's eyes. Husbands, find out where your wife stands in your, in her eyes. You know, where, where, where does everybody stand at? And I think that some of you may be surprised at what you find. If you're honest, if we're not honest, this is just a video to skip over. But if you want to be honest and you want to be transparent and you really want to know how your husband or your wife feels sit down together and watch this video and answer these questions honestly in front of each other eye to eye face to face and i'm sure that you're probably going to see some things that you can work on that's what i'm doing that's what i'm encouraging you to do the whole reason for making this video is to let you guys know what i'm going through what i'm doing i'm just trying to share some things with you that's going on in my life um, i just want to make sure that everything's transparent everything's good to go uh, everybody's on the right page same page you know when i die i don't want people to say well i just wonder or what if or i just wonder if this or that i don't want that to be even a question or a thought when i die i want my wife to say you know what i know exactly where he stands or he stood and I knew exactly what he believed and what he thought about me and the family and the ministry. And, and you know, I, I know what he was thinking before he died because it's a big part of me. So anyway, God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Hope this helps. Be honest with yourself today. God bless you.